These holidays are just complete bullshit. There was no St. Valentine. Um, there's no Jesus, no, uh, maybe a St. Patrick. You know, we don't even know. People tell a story over and over again. And it seems like Hitler says, well, just tell the big lie and just keep repeating it over and over again. Then the lie becomes the truth. Uh, and actually, it's the, the bigger the lie, the more easy it seems that people will be duped by it. So the fact that Jesus isn't real is probably one of the greatest hoaxes of our days, of our times. I mean, so many churches, so many establishments, so many charities, so many, you know, um, uh, people out here. But really, if Christianity was trying to solve poverty, why do we still have it? Why do we have the ills that we have? We could still take the churches and make them social institutions and um, create, you know, keep some of the things that are there, the connectedness to the uh, to the community and the good works that they have been doing, assuming they did some good works, starting schools, starting hospitals, you know, uh, getting street lamp lights for everybody. Um, Lupercalia starts out with kinky, sadomasochistic origins, so we don't. There was probably no Valentine whatsoever to speak of. Love's a good thing, so it's going to stay around forever. But why do we say Saint Valentine? You know, there is no Saint Valentine. Uh, established by the Catholic Church, 496 A.D., February 14th by Pope Galatius I, in order to cover up the widely popular Roman pagan rituals, Lupercalia. And Lupercalia is where they're taking pieces of um, goat and dog skin, dipped in blood, and they're smacking the women around, the pregnant women and the, uh, um, the young, fertile women, right, to help them become more fertile and to help their pregnancy <laughs> to help the pregnancy uh, be successful. So, um, Lupercalia went on for three days, February 15th, uh, 13th to the 15th. Lupercalia may have uh, started at the time of the founding of Rome, traditionally 753 B.C. or even before it entered, about 1,200 years later, after, at the end of the 5th century A.D. So, 1,200 years Lupercalia went on, at least in the West, although it continued in the East for another few centuries. Many reasons why Lupercalia lasted so long, um, it's because it had wide appeal. Lupercalia priests were called Lupercai, and Lupercai would hold ceremonies in a cave at the modern Palatine Hills where the twins Romulus and Remus, the founders of Rome, were said to be suckled by a she-wolf. So they were raised by wolves. The wolf actually raised the founders of Rome, the twins. And so we got to pay homage to the wolf god, the Lupercalia. During Lupercalia, February 13th, 15th, the goat... Dog is sacrificed for the god Lupercus to protect Rome from the wolves. And the Lupercai would take strips of goat and dog skin, dip them in the blood of the goat and dog, and wear the goat skin. Most of the time they would run naked, but sometimes they started being more modest and run around with the goat skin or dog skin, running around Rome slapping women with the strips of blood soaked goat and dog skin to purify the women to make them more fertile and uh, to guarantee them success in pregnancy. Mark Anthony was naked and gored, drenched after a crazed Lupercalia run, offers Julius Caesar the imperial crown of Rome where he rejects it three times because he's an honorable and humble man. Um, someone says the original St. Valentine's Nimrod on this day in February, Simi uh, Ramus, the mother of Tammuz, was said to have been purified and appeared for the first time in public with her son as the original mother and child. Thanksgiving in our own hemisphere among the Aztecs of Mexico. The harvest took on a grimmer aspect each year. A young girl represented Zelionin, the goddess of the new corn, was beheaded. So the Aztecs were beheading um, young girls. The Pawnees also sacrificed a girl. In a more temperate mood, the Cherokees of the American Southeast danced the green corn dance and began the new year at Harvest Inn. So the green corn dance, that's Thanksgiving. That's basically what the Indians in the Southeast America were uh, celebrating. Christmas, winter solstice celebration, Roman holiday, Saturnalia, Christmas Buddha was not Buddhist, Jesus was not Christian, Muhammad was not Muslim, the religion was love, Isaac Newton was born on December 25th, and he was definitely real, we should celebrate Isaac Newton, celebrate all things Isaac, uh, Isaac Newton, uh, he did create a scientific revolution, just like Albert Einstein did, and we know for a fact that he was born on December 25th, Isaac Newton was, so, conclusions, 
Um, the Protestants believe if you celebrated any of these Catholic pagan hell days, you'll go burn in hell because you're you got false idols. The golden calf in Moses' story is the Catholics, and so this goes to all the secularists and Catholics who celebrate Christmas, Easter, St. Valentine's Day, St. Patrick's Day, Christopher Columbus Day. Religion is slavery. So basically, all the holidays are religious festivals, right? Holidays, holy days. The very word comes from holy days. Holidays d does, and since all the holidays are religious, this means that they're all complete horseshit. Even Columbus Day comes from the church. It was pushed by the, I think, the Knights of Columbus, the Jesuits. So the fucking religion, it fucks up everything. It should be called Hell of Days, but fake people celebrate this shit because they're fucking fake. We should be more like Kwanzaa. There's more foundation for Kwanzaa. The it, it was made up in 1968 by a professor, but the whole idea of the uh, holiday is to have an alternative to Christmas for black people to get in touch with their African roots. So there is a purpose for Kwanzaa. There's also a purpose for the Gaelic seasonal festivals. So for Samhain, you know, Bel Belthane and uh, Imblock. Um, this is like the, the sort of the Groundhog's Day and the Halloween traditions. These came from seasonal times. So spring, summer, fall, winter. These are important times to know when the seasons are going to change, when we can get the food in and when we can't get the food in. You know, when's it time to harvest? When's it time to store up? When's it time to start planting? That's the changing of the seasons. And in the northern hemisphere, um, they always fall on the same days. So the winter solstice is the December 22nd. September 22nd is the fall. And usually the 21st or 22nd for each one of these. June 21st is the summer solstice. And March 21st is the spring equinox. So the uh, we could we should celebrate seasonal festivals. There's an inherent logic to this to know when it's going to get hot, when it's going to go you know through the summer heat and to the winter ice storms. Um, in the name of religion, all the Native Americans were murdered. Africans were enslaved. The Philippines were still a warring empire today. So really, we need to embrace atheism. You know what's white. That's nothing. Who gives a fuck about what white is? I'm a Kentucky German grip shover, um, born in the bluegrass, born in this state, and been around. But essentially, this is where I'm. I think I'm going to die. I'm going <laughs> to. This is where I was raised. That's where I'm going to die. So, um, and uh, grip shover and German culture, German roots, and grip shover is my uh, individual family on my mother's side who came over in 1869. Uh, two years before Otto von Bismarck started Germany. So actually we were the Germans before the Germans. We were Prussians, Bavarians, and Austrian and Bohemian. Also 11% African of which no grip shiver knows where that even came from. So we can turn springtime right. The, the Taint Patrick's Day right now is what's got it. But we can make it Wildcat Day. We can have our own cultural regeneration. We can make it the fall cardinal, our state bird. Now, now, something I say today is going to stick, okay? So, we can have Wildcat Day for the springtime, the fall Cardinals for the fall. Um, summer is close to the 4th of July, but a real summer sol solstice celebration should be for Simon Gertie, the Native Americans, the slaves who fought against the white European Civil War. Simon Gertie Day, like it's Guy Fawkes Day, the tipping point of summer. For wintertime, we could celebrate Kwanzaa, just take the same rituals. Put it into our own context. It'll be fun in the wintertime celebrating our commonalities, cultural regenerating. So not only is the summer a good idea, summer solstice for Simon Gertie, right? Simon Gertie, Vivo Simon Gertie forever. Uh, but you also have, um, well, he's a perfect Guy Fawkes day, but he was born on Christmas, December 25th. And I have more evidence of that than Jesus being born on December 25th. So, Simon Gertie, we can celebrate him for the winter. We can celebrate him for the summertime. Um, you know, genocide, they, that's a reason to have a festival. So, really, any reason, you know, we can have a festival, but we can have good festivals, things that actually make sense of people that's for, you know, good things. Native Americans, Thanksgiving, every time Protestant whites massacred the shit out of Native Americans, they threw a Thanksgiving. So that has got to be the worst fucking stain. What a slap in the face for Native Americans on Thanksgiving. We can actually start to have regeneration, talk about the Natives. Re, you know, um, I once heard that when somebody dies and you say their name to the soil, they still live. So Simon Gertie, Simon Gertie, Simon Gertie, right? That it, now to the world he lives because I created something out of that. Simon Gertie, I created his his name, and his name has some possible meaning for some people, um, and especially when you back it up with, you know, uh, events and, um, and who they were. 
So, lots of this, you know, Hitler loved the genocide and shit. Even President's Day, right? George Washington, he wipes out the Iroquois, killed Miami and Shawnee. Um, and then Lincoln, he had a mass execution of the Sioux Indians, the largest mass execution in America. He also uh, tried to colonize Haiti before integration. So, he was saying, yeah, ship them all back to Africa, ship them to Haiti, right, for the black folks. And he also had massive land reform. He was giving out 140 acres to anybody but sign a fucking application but he was giving away Indian land in the west to anybody who was willing to fight off the Indians and take care of the land. Um, Embolic is one of four Gaelic seasonal festivals along with Beltane, Luxnasiska, Samhain. So um, like I said these are seasonal holidays. It makes sense to have seasonal holidays. It sort of marks in between you know the summer solstice, autumn equinox, um, with the beginning of winter, the darker half of the year. Other holidays that correspond to the four seasons, Christmas, Groundhog's Day, Halloween, Thanksgiving, but to a lesser respect, I think Thanksgiving should be more time for mourning the Native Americans and also for my uncle, Tony Aloysius Gripshiver, who died on Thanksgiving Day. Christmas is the winter solstice. Groundhog's Day is the midpoint between winter solstice and spring equinox, and Halloween's kind of the midpoint for fall equinox and winter solstice. So really, we don't have any days that designate our springtime or our summertime or our fall and w winter is the only one that's really taken up by Christmas. Christmas ain't going to go anywhere because they got the winter solstice but the other solstices and equinoxes are wide open. So um, you got Groundhog's Day. It's it's in between the vernal spring equinox and the winter solstice, but it's in between, so it doesn't say really anything. It just said spring's almost here. Um, uh, February 2nd birthdays that we could celebrate. James Joyce, the portrait of the artist as a young man. Anne Rand. And the people are going to say, oh, Anne Rand, the, the hyper-individualism of America. America is founded upon our individuals. So read Anne Rand, even if you're not as libertarian as Rand Paul. I think it's important for any uh, progressive person to read also. So, Fountainhead, Anne Rand, Shakira, Her Hips Don't Lie, all these were born on September or February 2nd. James Joyce, Anne Rand, Fountainhead, Shakira, Head, Shakira. So, celebrate living people instead of a goddamn overweight rat who's fucking up our yards, okay? So, James Joyce, the portrait of the artist as a young man, February 2nd. He was born Anne Rand, author of Fountainhead, born on February 2nd, Shakira. Her hips don't lie. So that's better than uh, the Groundhog's Day. I'm going to go through each one of this. It's sort of the conclusion, so it's probably going to go definitely into the next video. Um, but it's going to, what are we going to do with them? So we got all these fucking holidays that don't mean shit, so what are we going to do with them, right? St. Patrick's Day, Easter, Passover, uh, Christopher Columbus, Halloween, Thanksgiving, Christmas, um, Groundhog's Day, Valentine's Day. What are we going to do with them? We get rid of all these. What are we going to? We going to put something in this place. We're going to do something differently. I think we really we just need to think about the whole idea of what a holy day is and why they matter. Um, so, Valentine's Day is you know about love. It's also the second holiday that says, "Ah, oh, spring is almost here." Um, the pa Patrick's Day is so close to the spring equinox. I really want to take it away from uh, Taint Patrick. Uh, in fact, I want to take it so far away, let's just make it Africa Day. Some people are saying that the Druids were also African people, and a lot of the uh, Irish um, uh, uh, customs and rituals had come from Africa. So, you know, let's just turn March 21st, the springtime, uh, Africa Day. Let's just make it Africa Day. So every spring, we just get our Africa on, and we do everything Africa. There's uh, Albert Einstein. He was born March 14th, and he died April 18th. So actually, that's the entire second half of March, but he covers the spring equinox. So we could have Albert Einstein's festival, okay? We gave him a festival for Albert Einstein during the springtime. Since March 14th and the April 18th, that covers spring. That will always cover spring. So we can have a big Africa day, right, on, um, on the springtime. Albert Einstein. We could have Albert Einstein festivals for a month. Right, celebration of everything that's science. March Madness, you know, instead of March Madness, we could have Albert Einstein Madness. Um, also, we can laugh at Tennessee. March 21st, uh, 1925, is when the state of Tennessee enacted the Butler Act. And the Butler Act went into effect in the state of Tennessee. So the Butler Act prohibited the teaching of the theory of evolution in any public funded school. This law would be famously tried during the Scopes Monkey Trial. And the law would remain in effect until 1967. So that's, that's fun, right? March 21st, what an idiot. What fucking Tennessee and the Butler Act, dumb motherfuckers. You can't teach evolution. You can't even mention evolution. So what? 
what happened. Just God clapped his hand and there it was. So, um, the springtime dates, March 14th to the April 18th, that's Albert Einstein's dates. I think that's perfect. Make fun of the Butler Act. And um, Africa Day, do all things Africa. So, um, just what, what's going on with Africa, right? They got, there's some issues. They got starvation issues and AIDS issues, and they're being exploited by the French. Uh, they have, you know, why is most of the African countries have to use French currency? Their banking system is totally fucked up. And then how much of their banking system is related to our own banking system? Did they get rid of Gaddafi because he wanted to have one currency for all of Africa? He wanted to unite the whole continent so he was a France fucking, just like Vietnam. Are we covering France's mistakes? Are we still an empire? 